So much of what you hear today is about living in the present, um, not being so kind of transfixed by the past or caught there or longing and looking forward to this kind of unknowable future that you've forgotten to be in today, to being present. And yet, weirdly, in James chapter 1, verse 12, we come to wisdom that says, in the area of enduring trials in your life, Blessing comes by living with the end point in view. James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Persevering under trials in the present by looking to a promised future return on that investment of the trial. Think upon that for a moment. It's written almost like a beatitude. Remember Jesus famously starts his Sermon on the Mount with a whole list of beatitudes? Well, now it's his brother's turn, and here is the beatitude of James. Blessed is the one, for they will receive. Well, what is the one who will be blessed? Well, blessed is the one who perseveres under trials. And what will they receive? A crown of life. See, think about that return that comes to the one who is blessed. They'll receive life. It's a shorthand way of talking about everlasting, enduring, eternal life. It's about that idea of being in God's kingdom under his reign and his rule for all time when trials have ceased, when suffering has ended. Blessed is the one who perseveres now under the trial with that end point in view, the crown of life. Let's see if we can catch that wisdom. Because you'll find yourself undoubtedly in some kind of trial, time and again. And if all you see is the immediate, that, that thing that's right in front of you, then you, you'll be overwhelmed by it. It's going to threaten your equilibrium. It'll rob you of your peace. It'll freak you out. You'll be flipping out. It'll be the dominant feature in your landscape. It's the problem. It's the trial. But wisdom says, pull back. Pull back a little further. And rather than seeing the, the micro of the trial, see the macro and recognise that there's something that's going on. There's a process of development, a testing, a process of development at work. And that trials that Christians experience and are persevering under are building Something. They're building muscle, if you like, fitting you for a future kingdom. Of course, in order for this wisdom to work, you've got to know the true value of the crown of life. That's got to be something that you want. Otherwise, you'll be prone to think that the burden of the trial is greater than the reward of the crown. It's, it's why I'd never compete in a marathon. Because you'd probably find me about four kilometres in out of 42, wincing in pain. And you'll try and coach me to keep going. And you say, oh, think of the end. Think of the finish line. Think of the feeling of crossing that line in just, just another 38 kilometres of effort. The self-fulfilment. The roar of the crowd. The pride in your kid's eyes. The tear of respect that's running down Heidi's cheek as you cross the finish line. And you think, the medallion draped around your neck. Wow, isn't that terrific? Keep going. And I say, big deal. By the time I get there, it'll be tomorrow or the day after. The crowd will be well gone. Heidi and my kids, well, they're not impressed. And this flat-footed fool is no runner. And I know that. That the pain is too great and the reward too small. But James is saying the opposite. That when wisdom is applied to the Christian life, persevere now, whatever the trial because the reward is so great. See, you've got to think upon what it means to be promised the crown of life that God has a promise to those who love him. To live and to long for that. To recognise this life for what it is. And the life to come for all that we are gifted. Can I suggest that you find some time today to ask, when is God's promise of a glorious future? helped you endure a hard time? Do you need to be reminded of that today? 
And then ask, God, will you renew my mind so that I can see the value of that reward and the desire for the crown of life, that that might inform my perspective on the trials as they come? And and as we close off today's thought, I, I want you to look actually what comes next and see how James links this idea of enduring trials to the next three verses, which are all about temptation and sin. And to listen to his wisdom on the life cycle of desire and death. Let me read these verses. Chapter 1, verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own desires and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. That topic of temptation and sin and death, we're going to spend more time on that when we get to chapter 3 and chapter 4 in James. But for a brief moment, consider this. It helps to know that the word tempted in verse 13 is exactly the same word trial that was used in verse 12. James has called us to persevere under trials and then immediately makes the link with trials and temptations. And that's because trials are easily places where we surrender to temptations. And the temptation is like a trial of a different kind. A desire for things to be different. We're tempted to want things to be easier or more pleasant. To not be delayed, to be less painful, to be more secure or more affirmed or less costly. And and James says, you ought to know where desire comes from and where they lead. They do not come from God. No one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But rather, they are birthed out of our desire. The NIV adds the word evil to evil desire, but the word is just desire. The problems arise when our desire, whatever it is, good or bad, is directed towards sin. And there is inevitably a life cycle that that desire, that want for things to be different, gives way. And potentially sin is born. And if sin is born, as desire gives way to it, then let sin fully grow and it gives birth to death. Here is a call to be wise as we endure trials and temptations. Enduring with the crown of life in sight and also in sight. Seeing the life cycle from desire to sin to being crowned with death. See, in a sense, James could be summarised as a book of wisdom on how to resist moving from the desire and temptation to sin and death to lead us with wisdom to everlasting life. And so here is a call to persevere and to be wise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Would you have us see the end, the crown of life? Would you also have us see the end of sin and that it gives birth to death? But you are the one, Lord, who has dealt with sin and death. So would you direct our desires to you that we would long for your blessing, that we might persevere under whatever might come this day or in all of our tomorrows, so that we might indeed run this race, knowing that we have already been granted this crown of life. And so, Lord, help us. Endure today. And, Lord, where we need to repent of sin, would you have us see the death that we would otherwise be awarded and run to the one who gives us life? We thank you that forgiveness is found in no one else. And so we thank you for Jesus, for his death, that has brought us life. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and enjoy the day.